WPAT 930. You're listening to Christian Varley. So let's get to this Oscar thing, Chris, because I know you have a lot to say about I, this. And- I, I have a ton to say, and I'm going to take a second while we're at it to mention that I went to see uh, the movie which is getting nominated and may very well win Best Picture called The Reverend. It's a very strange name, and it's directed by, it's with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy, and they're all over the place, and I like the movie, and it has a, uh, the Mexican director who directed this. He's already had two Oscars. His name is real. I'm going to chew his name up, but it's Alexandro... Gonzalez Iritu. So it's it's a tongue twister for me. But he's a fantastic director. And anyway, it's kind of a cowboys and Indians type of movie. But it was fantastic. I went in there not really thinking highly of it that I'm going to like it. Um, but I'll be honest with you, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio didn't even have that many lines in it. And it worked because the movie was shot all outdoors. And it's up for Best Picture. I have a feeling it's going to win. And my big pick for this year is... Um, is the new Mad Max Fury Road, which is also just a mind blower. They're visual movies, but I love them, and they're both nominated for Best Picture. They they they've cleaned up the awards, so that's my thing. I think they have picked a couple of good movies. They stiffed a few yeah. people, but there wasn't that many great movies this year. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Rick. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. But I, I will tell you one thing: mm-hmm. what they're they're lacking in Hollywood these days, um, a great story and with interesting characters that aren't twenty something actors. Uh, well, this conversation is wild. So hang with us. We'll be right back. Because we'll that was actually from a movie soundtrack called, obviously, Heavy Metal, which was a 1980s uh, movie. And it had great imagery in it, by the way. Yeah, when you approach the studio, and you and I know, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. You and I shoot a lot of movies. We film a lot of stuff. And we're independent. I mean, I don't have any, you know, exorbitant budgets. I have smaller budgets. I don't have the budgets for the for these other movies. So we, But I always go out there, and I've been accused many times of being a 1970s type director. Because I, yeah. I have very, you know, we're very method actors us and the people that I've worked with and uh, you know it's funny but you go out there with not a big I don't have a hundred million dollar budget hopefully one day we will but you're a hundred percent right and if you go to one you pitch it to one of the studios they're going to say okay um, how many robots do you have in this film who's a superhero every actor out there is now trying to play Batman so that they can be you know or whatever superhero so they could parlay off that and then they just do the sequels you know I'm Thor Thor one Thor two directors do they say Mm -hmm. well I'll, I'll I'll sell you three uh, three of these um, these films that that are going to make multi multi-million, mm-hmm. and then I'll I'll give you three of those if you could you allow me to make this one that's very artistic exactly. and close to my heart. So they sell their their souls for three in order to make one that they really believe in. You know Morgan Freeman. We got it. Our Denzel Washingtons. Sure. And you know something, Chris. I wouldn't blame I wouldn't blame Hollywood's prejudice on this this whole uh, dissension in Hollywood and this whole outcry by uh, by Will Smith's wife. Uh, what's her name? Pinkett. Uh, yeah, um, I, I worked with her. Um, uh, uh, Jada, Jada Pinkett. Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith. Pinkett. I was working on a show with her. I didn't even know it was her. And I was talking to her, and I'm sitting hanging out with her. And next thing, this like angry bodyguard is looking at me like he's going to tear my head off. And then later on, somebody said. Oh yeah, that's Jada, and I go. That's Will Smith's wife. Oh, cool. She's a nice girl. Really? Uh, well, no, I I agree. I who, who cares about like the great Martin Luther King said? You know, let's not look at a man's uh, you know skin color, but the content of their character. It's such a joke. There's so many different people, and it's you know it, we're all the same, and it doesn't matter. And by the way, if we're doing a superhero movie, okay, and you Ralph or I want to be stars, all we have to do is put Anthony Hopkins or Morgan Freeman in the movie to be our mentor, and we got a hit. You know, <laughs> they, I, they, saw, I they saw Anthony Hopkins. Everything. Uh, uh, play play Nixon in the movie Nixon. He was great, and it was kind of uh, it was kind of um, an Oliver Stone. Um, it was one that wasn't quite as good as some of the others. I I thought anyway. It was it was interesting, but uh, if that's you, a tough if, one. If you can get Anthony Hopkins <clears throat> to be in your film, you're ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. Chris Rock, who is he fancies himself politically incorrect, but Chris probably, Rock. he's really not because no. he's he's playing the game like everybody else, of and he. Is. he he was kind of intimidated into now. Now listen to this, Chris. Changing his monologue for star. He's going to host the. Oscars, Is he hosting you know, it? Uh, yeah. And they, they forced him to change the narrative of his monologue starting the Oscars, and that's your first uh, step in caving 
to the politically correct crowd. I even worked on a, on a film with him one day, but I, but he's not a bad guy, and he's not you know terrible. I'm not a big Chris Rock fan, but there's a, there's a whole other talent to hosting, and and it has nothing to do with skin color. This has to do with the fact that the only two guys I know, there was a couple of other ones that hosted the, the Oscars and did it correctly, was, believe it or not, it's nostalgic, but Bob Hope and Billy Crystal. Those were the only two guys, and I'm not saying a couple of other people didn't get it decent. Johnny around. Carson. Johnny Carson was another natural host because they were natural hosts. Being a comedian does not make you a natural host. Chris Rock can be funny at times. I'm not really a big fan of his. You know, stand-up comedy, Eddie Murphy was great. Richard Pryor, those guys, Steve Martin, Robin Williams, those guys are masters at, at, at doing stand-up comedy. But hosting is a totally different skill. Um, you, know who, you, know the, you know who the greatest yeah. was out of those you just mentioned? God. Richard, Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor was great. If you, if you, you know, if you ever heard some of his best material... Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy was absent, and this is before, see what happened when he um, did the cocaine and he went screaming down the street um, <laughs> did the uh, cocaine. on fire, yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> doing balls of cocaine, cocaine and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. He had an epiphany. He said, I won't use the N-word anymore in my in my act, and that lasted for about, maybe about Ten three minutes. or four months, and he went back. <laughs> he, was the, he was the rawest, the greatest comedian of his, of his day, I would take Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, and um, George Carlin, uh, and Robert Klein. They're probably my top four. And Robin Williams, I didn't care for his stand-up that much, but he was wonderful in films. Oh, my God. Well, Robin Williams was, you know, forget it, another major loss was a force to be reckoned with, and I agree with you. I they're absolutely destroying the movies that we love so dearly. They, they really are. Absolutely, they. You know, you, you nailed it. And you know, for, for in a sense, from a purist, I, I, I love entertaining people and I love storytelling. You know, and that's how I was trained as, uh, in film school and as actors. It was always about that. You know, about how do you how do you create this character? How do you portray this so that the audience can feel it, can understand it? But you know, you, when you start watering down, like you said, everything, and now all of a sudden, the the acting, whether we like it or not, and the casting in something, it's amazing how you can go in so many different directions and it might still work. But some things you just can't do. You can't change certain things. It just doesn't work. You raised a good point. And has nothing to do again it gets back to content of anything and yeah you could bring them in to do so many different things you could bring any group of people and it does you mix them up i've never i i have been colorblind all along ever since i was ever since i was younger and, and the same thing when i'm casting making a movie i mix it up as much as i can i love doing that you know i don't vote and they say if you don't vote you have you have no reason to complain well i stay you know what i do on uh on uh, on on um, election day, I stay home, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I play with my. I said I play with myself, and I stay home. And I have at the end of the night, I have something to show for it. Well, it's like a part of a Carlin bit. You know, it's funny. We we we're gonna stay a lot on the Oscars too. We'll go whichever way you want, and everybody. But listen, uh, and again, two one two two one nine nine six nine five. You're listening to Christian Varley, and I just had a little another little clip. We're gonna get right back to Ralph in one second. Um, it's from a, another movie right now. I just wanna. A little something here if it goes through, so Slaughter. years no doubt have changed me, sir. But then I suppose the face of a barber, the face of a prisoner in the dark, is not particularly memorable. That was a scene from Sweeney Todd. You have to see it. And we're talking to Ralph Romeo. We're talking about the Oscars. That was Alan Rickman, who just also passed away. We jumped in a weird combination there. We jumped from um, the great Glenn Fry. Um, and that was a little voice of Alan Rickman and, um, of course, Johnny Depp from the, the movie Sweeney Todd, which was a great play, by the way, with Angela Lansbury. You just mentioned, and you threw out the name, of course, Montgomery Cliff and, of course, Clark Gable. Those legends, they, they were great. They were really great. You know, uh, Clark Gable, he made his switch. He was, a, I think, a stuntman and went to, uh, to go do background work. And then he got his theater training in New York. And I think he married some woman who really wasn't much of a looker, but she taught him how to dress. And he deepened his voice up. And next thing, Grammy, he's suddenly talking like Clark Gable, you know. And so much, right? 
you need kissing, Scarlett. And suddenly oh, the women fell in love with him. He had like third billing in some movie and he put some woman down on a couch and the women fell in love with him. And then next thing you know, he's doing uh, It Happened One Night and some other stuff. But Montgomery Cliff is a study on crazy. I love the, I love him. But what an underrated actor and just a fantastic actor. Well, and, you know, if you see Monty Cliff in The Young Lions with... Uh, mm-hmm. Dean Martin and Brando right and uh, a few others. You see a Clift after his accident. He had a had a really disfiguring accident that destroyed his one one side of his face. And it would say about him, Chris, before that accident that he was too pretty. He was uh, yeah. too feminine looking, very pretty, and he was. He was a very handsome guy, but he was a troubled soul. And he was gay in mm-hmm. the time when you couldn't come out of the closet. Even in Hollywood, but the insiders in Hollywood of his day, they, they all knew. They all knew the Rock Hudsons. They all knew, uh, you know, all these, all these guys that were gay in the closet. But Monty Clift would regularly, um, have prostitutes, male prostitutes to his house. Okay. And they would rob him and beat him and he'd come back for more and he was a very self-destructive kind of a character, but he was a fine, fine actor. He was a yes. notch below a Brando, but a fine actor, Chris. No, he really was. And, you know, like you talked about, and he was a handsome guy, and then after his accident, he was great friends with Elizabeth Taylor. At a young yeah, age. Liz Taylor helped him. You know, Liz Taylor mm-hmm. always took on a case that needed her assistance. You know, later on, she went to Michael Jackson, and she went, you know, she always was uh, drawn to all these people that were, you know, just in desperate straits, you know? Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's funny that the story was that he had gotten into the sax. He was at a party at Rock Hudson's house, of course, and Elizabeth Taylor were there. And the two of them were really a couple. I don't know, you know, if they had a fling or whatever it is or which way he was swinging. But she always had an attachment to him in a couple of movies. And he just you just never knew it was gonna sh- well, who was going to show up. And when they did The Misfits with uh, Marilyn Monroe and Clark yeah. Abel, mm-hmm. it was an interesting, uh, you know, send off to all of them because they not long after they all passed away. And the only one who hung around was a younger Eli Wallach, who was also a great method actor. Very nice guy. I've, I've met him a couple of times. Um, but on that set, uh, Marilyn Monroe said and she was screwed up, Marilyn Monroe, beautiful woman, but just screwed up. And she said. I think I've met the one person that's more screwed up than me. And she was talking about <laughs> Mon- Montgomery Clare, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, the thing is with him is that he, he used his neurosis to his advantage in films. Even yeah. even when you go back as far as something as, uh, like, where they, you know, they really were um, acting in a presentational way, not so much a internal way, like back in the movie The Heiress, when uh-huh. he was with Olivia de Havilland, you, you kind of detected... His uh, unbalance, his neurosis, even through that character of uh, of uh, Morris Townsend in uh, in that great film, The Heiress. And if you haven't checked out that film, uh, don't uh, don't uh, just lock yourself into the films of the day. Try to discover. And I'm talking to all you folks out there. Try to discover the great films of our of uh, our generation and the past generation, the generation before that. You know, I'll just rattle a few off to you right Shoot now. Shoot them out. The air, the you know, the heiress. Go back and see Crimes and Misdemeanors by the great Woody Allen. It's a fabulous film. Um, the Insider which was made in the end 90s with Pacino and, um, uh, you know, they, who's the other actor? They, they, you know who I'm talking about. Russell Chris, the, um He was in everything. And oh, Christopher Plummer. Me. Christopher Plummer. You know who I'm, what's that? Uh, you said Gladiator. The Insider. Uh, but but The Insider was Al Pacino, Christopher Plummer, um, Russell Crowe. We're not Googling this, by the way. We're running Russell Crowe. No, we don't Google. I'm right here just, just <laughs> off the top of our heads. I had a lot to talk about. Hey, don't worry about what people say or think or anything. You listen to the Christian Varley, the Ralph Romeo radio program. Of course, we're talking in depth with Ralph Romeo, the legend himself. And we've been talking about the Oscars and everything else. And 212-219-9695. We're having a great conversation about movies. And I'm loving it. And we haven't even gotten to Trump yet. 40% in the polls. You know, I, I don't think that, I really don't think when it comes down to it, yeah. will Trump be the nominee? Uh, uh, I would say at this point in time, most like likely, it. yeah. I don't think a Republican can win the presidency with a demographic in, 20, in 2016. I just don't see it, Chris. Well, let me I ask think you. whoever gets the nomination on the uh, on the Democrat side will, will win. I Dream don't think team. Trump can beat Hillary. I don't think he can beat Biden. I just don't. And Dream I don't team. think 
that Bernie Sanders will be the nominee. I just right. don't see it. Your opinion, dream team, okay? I think that it, it's a toss-up. I think I think that Trump has got the women like him, people like him, people like him because he's a celebrity and stuff. But a question: I think he's the one guy who can win California and New York, and they're petrified of that. Who knows what could happen? And maybe maybe they'll all run out and vote for Hillary. Who knows? But dr- question: Dream team. Bill, uh, not Bill Clinton, but Donald Trump is the president, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is his VP. Oh what, my do, what do you God. think? Can we just, uh, you know, just pack it in? You know, Arnold was the, the biggest, this is the thing that Trump would have to avoid. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger was the biggest disappointment. They thought he would be a tremendous politician. No, he, he was the worst. He was the worst governor. Of, he was worse than that guy, uh, Gray, the guy Gray. Yeah, he replaced. Name, Gray Davis. Get to the chopper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he mean, replaced he was, him. He was just horrendous. In fact, there's a guy that should have stuck to bodybuilding, but then he went into filming at a fortune. So. You do need a hero, and that's the Lord. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Buddy. You got it, brother. God bless you, Ralph. I'll see you soon. And uh, George Miller's Mad Max Fury Road is my pick for best picture at the Oscars this year. Uh, and my close second choice is The Reverend. They're both great movies. Uh, director Gonz- um, and I'm not. I'm going to mess his name up. And Gonzalez, you know, I'm talking about who did who did The Reverend. And also, again, everybody, thank you so much. And God bless you. We had a little phone tag there. Again, everybody, uh, there is a scripture that says, "I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you hope and a future." You know, keep that in mind. And Ralph is right. You do need somebody. No, no, no man is an island. So, but follow the Lord most of all. And God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Christian Varley signing out. Here we go.